Okay, uh, so greetings, let us get started. So to have a quick recap of what we did yesterday, we started off with uh, a discussion on the steering system, right? So we looked at uh, what is called as the Ackerman steering geometry. Uh, we started off by looking at what happens to the wheels which are in contact with the road and uh, how this Ackerman steering condition uh, relates the steering wheel, uh, wheel angles of the inner and the outer wheels uh, to the vehicle specification, right? The track and the wheel base of the vehicle, okay? So uh, then we considered the uh, trapezoidal steering mechanism. We looked at uh, what are all, what is the equation that relates the various parameters. So the question that we uh, stop with was the following, you know, like the question is, how do we choose this, uh, these two parameters d and beta, right? So the question that naturally arises from yesterday's uh, discussion is that how to choose uh, d and beta such that the Ackerman steering condition is satisfied. So that is the uh, That is the question to ask, right? So, of course, to the best possible extent, right? So, let me write in as a comment. So, if we do an exercise, we will be able to see that we are not going to be in a position to satisfy the Ackerman steering condition with a trapezoidal steering mechanism for any arbitrary steering wheel input. So, the question becomes how close can we get to the Ackerman steering condition? So, to the best extent. Okay, possible. Okay, so that is the question that one needs to ask. So that can be a subject of uh, further analysis. Okay, so in today's class, we are going to start off by asking this question. Okay, so we looked at what happens to the steered wheels, right? So essentially, the wheels which are in contact with the road surface. Now the question that arises is that like how do I first of all turn those wheels that are steered, right, by using an appropriate mechanism. So that is the question we are going to uh, discuss today. So how does one turn the steered wheels, okay. So what do we mean by steered wheels? Steered wheels are, are the ones that are in contact with the ground, okay, or the road in our case, right. So, so essentially that is where a steering system uh, comes into play. So, a steering system is an assembly of various subsystems and components which help us in achieving this uh, task. So let us see you know like how this uh, steering system is classified, right? So one class of steering system is what is called as a manual steering system where the assistance to the driver to turn a steered wheel is provided by a gear assembly. Please note that we have to rotate a wheel assembly which is loaded. If you consider a typical passenger car, once you set the car on the ground, there are normal loads acting on at the tyre road interface, right, at a corresponding wheel. So if you consider the front wheels, obviously there are normal loads acting at the front tyre road interface. So we need to be in a position to rotate that front wheel when it is subjected to this normal load. Consequently, the driver needs some assist to or assistance to do this task. So if that comes purely from mechanical linkages and a gear assembly, that is typically classified as a manual steering system. And manual steering systems are further classified into two types. Uh, one is depending on the gear which is used, 
one is what is called as a uh, rack and pinion steering which is commonly used in cars and the one which is used in heavy vehicles is basically a warm gear based system right. So, these are two gear assemblies which are used. Now, on the other hand, so let me draw arrows. So, this is the classification of a manual steering system. On the other hand, if you look at uh, uh, modern steering systems, you know like we use what is called as a power steering right. So, wherein the effort which is expected from the driver is further reduced by assisting the driver through some other energy source right. So, what are these systems? So, the second class of systems you know like that we are going to look at are what are called as power assist systems, power assisted steering systems. So, these are further divided into depending on how this power assist comes in it can be a pure hydraulic power assist system it can be what is called as an electro hydraulic power assistance system and it can be a pure electric power assist system ok. So, this is a further sub classification of these power assist systems. So, what we are going to do is that like we are first going to look at what is what are the general components that make up a steering system. Once we do that we are going to uh, look at you know how each of these you know systems are realized in practice and how they operate and so that like we can compare their features right the pros and cons. So, that is something which we are going to do. So, to begin with let us first look at the components of a typical vehicle automobile steering system. So, if the components of a typical steering system include the following. So, if you look at a simple uh, schematic we can identify these components easily. So, uh, if we look at uh, uh, the schematic, so we can immediately see that the driver controls the steering wheel right. So, that is what is under the control of the driver and then the command from the steering wheel is transmitted through a steering column. So, this entire assembly is what is called as a steering column ok. So, this entire steering column transmits the effort or input provided by the driver to the steering gear ok which is mounted at the end of the steering column right. So, essentially this is uh, not a rack, but a pinion in a rack and pinion or a gearbox ok. So, essentially the energy is transmitted to a steering gear through the steering column. The steering column has a collapsible section the reason being that in the event of a crash the steering wheel should not come and hit the driver right. So, in order to enable in order to prevent that. So, the steering column consists of a collapsible section such that in the event of a crash this essentially does the steering wheel would not injure the driver ok. And there are flexible couplings and universal joints which transmit the motion and this shaft which does it is what is called as the intermediate shaft ok or I shaft. So, in as far as steering system is concerned uh, if we talk about the I shaft we are talking about this intermediate shaft which consists of all these uh, components right and it has universal joints to transmit the motion right to the steering gear ok. So, we look at what are the different choice of steering gears and then how they are subsequently connected to the um, 
uh, steered wheels right. So, to enumerate the components of a typical steering system, the first component which the driver actuates is what is called as a, a steering wheel. Then we have the steering column which consists of the intermediate shaft or the I shaft and the universal joints. Then the steering gear is attached at the end of the steering column. This provides the mechanical advantage, right? Uh, essentially, it amplifies the torque provided by the driver, right? So that's the primary purpose of the uh, steering gear. So steering gear essentially uh, gives us mechanical advantage, right? Within quotes. Uh, so, what is mechanical advantage? It essentially amplifies the uh, torque which is uh, provided by the driver. Then we have the steering mechanism. So, what we uh, looked at in the uh, previous class, right? From the steering gear, you know, like the effort is transmitted to the track rod or rack, depending on the uh, steering system. Then we have tie rods. Okay, we have what are called as pitman arms, we are going to look at those components today, right. And then like we have the steering arm, so yesterday we considered the tie rod and the steering arm assembly, right, the steering arms. Then what is called as a steering knuckle, steering knuckle is a component on which you know like the wheel assembly, the steered wheel assembly is mounted, right, it is connected to the steered wheel assembly so that like the steered wheel is rotated, right. It is part of the steering mechanism and then like we have uh, the ball joints or king pins, right. So, which once again we looked at uh, them yesterday, all right. So, this is the, uh, these are the typical components that make up a typical uh, steering system, okay. So, in fact, if we try, you know like if we go and try to uh, turn the steering wheel of a car which is suspended. Let us say we take it to a, a two post lift okay, and then like raise the car such that the tyres are no longer in contact with the ground and we try to turn the steering wheel you will see that the wheel rotates pretty easily because the wheels are suspended in air. But the same car once placed on the ground is requires more effort to rotate the steered wheels. Why? Because now the there is a normal load at the tyre road interface of the steered wheels. So, that is why a parameter called as steering ratio becomes very important. So, the steering ratio is a is an important parameter as far as the steering system is concerned and how is it defined? It is the ratio of the angle through which the steering wheel is turned so what is the steering wheel this one right so this component so the steering wheel is this component what we are talking about right so the angle through which the steering wheel is turned to the corresponding angle, let us say we call it as angular displacement of the steered wheel. So, let us say the front wheels which are steered, what is the corresponding? Uh, angular displacement of the steered wheel, right. So, that is what is called as the steering ratio. Why is this important? Because this is how it is defined. So, as we can see, you know, like neglecting energy losses, you will see that the torque is going to be amplified by the same ratio. That is, if the steering ratio is, let us say, 10 for a particular steering system, I am just taking a round number, you know. So, if I want 1 degree of 
displacement of the steered wheel right which is in contact with the ground I need to rotate my steering wheel by 10 degrees that is the meaning. Consequently, if I apply 1 Newton meter of steering wheel torque right that is going to result in 10 Newton meter of torque at the steered wheel okay neglecting energy losses right. So, that is what we are going to achieve right. So, typically for most cars this ratio is between 12 is to 1 to 20 is to 1 okay and the primary purpose why we uh, ensure that the steering ratio is proper is to enable the, the gear reduction uh, is required to achieve the necessary mechanical advantage as we already observed right. So, the necessary mechanical advantage uh, since we need to turn a loaded tyre see that is important right because the tyre is loaded. So, since we need to turn a loaded uh, tyre wheel assembly so we need this mechanical advantage okay. So, this also brings us to what is the total angular displacement from center to lock and lock to lock okay. So, what do I mean by that? So, typically when the steering wheel so let us say you know like we plot the this is just a illustration. So, let us say you know like I am going straight you know my steering wheel is at the center position it is at the center position right. So, if I turn it all the way to the right till it locks we find out what is the total uh, angular displacement to go there. Similarly, if I turn it all the way to the left let us say we come to the lock position on the other side right. So, the steering ratio also helps us in figuring out what is the lock to lock angular displacement of the steering wheel for a required displacement of the steered wheel and vice versa okay. So, what do I mean by this let us say you know like this is what is called as you know like let us say you know like theta steering wheel right let us me let me call it as theta S w right. So, just as a simple exercise uh, let us consider this right. So, example so let us consider a steering ratio of 12 right 12 is to 1 right. So, let the steered wheels so or, or we will say it is required that the steered wheels be rotated by 40 degrees from center to lock on either side that is what do I mean by steered wheels the ones which are in contact to the ground right. This implies that what we call as theta steering wheel is going to be what 12 times 40 degrees right. So, that is going to be the displacement of the steering wheel the corresponding steering wheel and that is essentially a 480 degrees. So, 480 degrees corresponds to how many turns 1 and 1 and 1 third turns right. So, of the steering wheel right. So, this is from center to lock right. So, this implies the so called lock to lock turns 
is going to be 2 and 2 third turns right or revolutions of the uh, steering wheel okay so we can essentially observe that how this uh, steering ratio helps us in determining how many turns we need to rotate the uh, steering wheel to calculate a, uh, to achieve a certain angular displacement of the steer wheel okay so now let us move ahead, move ahead and then like look at uh, manual assist steering systems so if we uh, go up you know like manual assist steer, steering systems are gear assisted right so as we have already seen we have a rack and pinion and a warm gear based system so first let us look at what are called as warm gear based steering systems or what is generally called as a pitman arm type steering okay so this is the one which is uh, based on uh, warm gears so what is this uh, pitman arm type steering system so let's consider a simple schematic to understand that so what happens in a pitman arm type steering is the following and uh, the construction of the steering system is as shown here so what what happens here so we have this uh, st uh, the steering system once again starts at the steering wheel there is a steering column right so and that ends in a steering gear box so we look at what are the different choices available for a uh, steering gear in a pitman arm type steering so in this uh, gear you know like uh, the input torque provided by the driver is amplified and that torque is essentially provided to what is called as a pitman arm so you can see that there is a component called as this pitman arm which is which can be rotated so that pitman arm you know like then displaces this track rod right and we can immediately observe that the track rods are connected to a tie rod on each end a tie the tie rod is connected to the steering arm which in turn is continues to the so called steering knuckle on which that entire tire assembly or wheel assembly is mounted so the steering wheel is rotated motion is transmitted through the steering column to the steering gear gear the torque is amplified and then provided to the pitman arm the pitman arm replaces the track rod and the track rod essentially displaces the tie rod the tie rod then turn rotates the steered wheels through the steering arm and the steering knuckle okay so that's what happens in this uh, pitman arm type steering so essentially these are warm gear based steering okay so okay let me not write it here so i will i'll write it down you know uh, a few quick points these are uh, warm gear based steering systems okay and these uh, are typically equipped with what what is called as a steering box within quotes the steering box is nothing but the steering gear right and uh, typically it has a high steering ratio high steering ratio so one advantage is that like uh, give, as a result it gives a better mechanical advantage not only due to the gear ratio but also to the uh, to the arrangement of the linkages the pitman arm and others give some lever advantage also right so essentially it gives better mechanical advantage through its uh, due to its realization uh, so but the uh, one limitation is that it gives less feedback
is available to the driver compared to rack and pinion right in the event of changes in road conditions okay uh, so under changes in road condition there is feedback but with changes in road conditions the change in feedback available to the driver is comparatively lower all right in this pitman on steering systems so that's a uh, limitation okay so this is the uh, construction of a pitman arm type type steering system 